All right, cool. Just give me the go. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Paul Loya. I'm the Deputy Director of Collections and Exhibitions here at the Long Beach Museum of Art, and I am very graciously joined by Brent Esper today, LA-based artist. Um, we're sitting amongst his show, Creature Comforts, um, his first museum exhibition, and we're honored to host it here at the Long Beach Museum of Art. So thank you, Brent. Thanks for being thank here Thank you. Yeah. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, no problem. Uh, no, it's great. I thought we'd have a, you know, just have a time to sit down and chat, you know, based on all of our studio visits and things. I thought it'd be really fun just to kind of talk about, you know, the process of your show, uh, the process of putting this all together, um, you as an artist, and kind of some other fun things that, you know, I think we'll kind of go off track and talk about. Today. Oh, yeah. We yeah. can definitely go off track. <laughs> I like going off track. <laughs> right. But uh, uh, I think one of the first things I wanted to kind of talk about was, yeah, I was putting this show together, you know, sitting amongst this work now with you. It's kind of surreal, you know, um, thinking about how long it took to get to this point. Oh, yeah. You know, from the inception of the show, from the initial invitation um, and all those steps in between all the studio visits that we've had. Um, and so I know that as from a curator's point, like there's all these things that happened in my perspective, but I was interested to hear about how it was for you. You know, mm. like how, like, did you enjoy the process of it? Was it everything you thought it would be? Like, what was that like for you? Uh, yes, uh, just uh, I, all processes in art, I enjoy. <laughs> um, and this one I am uh, extremely enjoy. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, I mean, this museum show was a, a huge, huge step for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm, I'm very, very thankful for that. Uh, and I, I knew I was going to, get to showcase a lot of these pieces at this scale and um, how impactful I was hoping that was going to be, especially for kids coming through here, which I've been hearing kids have been loving it, oh, which yeah. I, I love. Um, but it was fun. The, the whole cre Okay. So should I give a quick story about how sure. this all came about? Oh, yeah. So this started uh, kind of my relationship with Long Beach Museum of Art started about 10 years ago in 2012, um, did I was, uh, half, I was halfway through dental school and um, submitted a piece for the charity auction they were doing here. It got accepted um, and it sold that night. And that was kind of the thing that got my gears turning like, oh, wow, I could potentially have a career in art. Mm -hmm. And that's when, you know, I established, uh, first established a relationship with Ron been talking ever since. And then Ron came over to my studio, uh, when was it? Maybe 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, and I had the big toy box piece in there. And he goes, okay, um, how about a museum show? And I graciously accepted. Yeah. And then I met Paul and then we started the uh, very fun and exciting kind of curating process of yeah. all this, um, which was awesome. We had our, uh, we had a full, scale model of this and all the pieces to scale that we could move them around and talk about them. And, and what I have to really applaud Paul for is there's a lot of different works and styles in here. And Paul had a great eye of making sure it all felt together and mm -hmm. right. And I'm, uh, that was very important to me. So thank you very yeah. much for doing that. No, absolutely. Uh, I mean, that was a fun part about doing it, you know, is noticing like how to group these works together. Yeah, because it's like, oh my gosh, like how do we put all this together? How do we make, how do we create a narrative for our audience to follow through? It's good to have a nice storyline mm -hmm. to kind of be able to put the pieces together, you know, um, and make something of it all. So yeah, one thing I think that one of your strong talents is like your ability to utilize paint, you know, and using, you know, understanding color theory and the way you apply it to texture. And I think that's what I really wanted the audience to feel when they came in here. Like, mm. How do we group, you know, how do we show you apply those uh, aspects of paint to different types of uh, subject matter? You know? mm. So we started, you know, with the teddy bear, you know, with the uh, stuff pile of animals and then moving into the abstract works and the geometric grids and the quilts and such. And so mm -hmm. anyways, I love the way that you were able to apply the different textures, you know, to different forms and uh, subject matter. Thank so, you. Yeah. So it was um, I, really uh, fun. I've been one of the things I've been thinking lately is um, uh, I don't want people to see my work. I want people to feel mm -hmm. my work. Uh, I hope that it kind of evokes 
something in them. And I feel like the texture is a great way to bring a, a painting to life. Yeah. Um, and that's why I love, love oil painting. Yeah. And uh, really, okay, the real things I, I really, really love in oil painting, color and texture. They're oh. my, I <laughs> love, it. I feel so privileged that I get to explore these kind of, uh, these beautiful things in life. Yeah. Um, but I love, I love what people get out of mm-hmm. looking at my work and, and all artwork in general. Yeah. Um, and what informs that? I mean, like, where does that come from? Though, your like understanding of color, of color theory. I mean, because kids, I mean, people mm. go to school for just and take classes on just specifically that and takes, you know, and then, um, and even the application of texture. I mean, I feel like you have like this, this, uh, Ability just to understand that off the bat, you know. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, it's one of those things is uh, one of the great benefits to art. And I and kind of like any creative industry is um, lifelong student. Mm-hmm. You always get to learn more. You always get to grow. You always get to uh, explore more. You always get to go through periods of uncomfortability and growing. You get to go through periods of, you know, elation. But I, I honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm obsessed with painting. I, mm-hmm. I've, for all intents and purposes, I've done it every single day of my life right. since I started in 2009. Okay. Um, and so I always was in, it, in terms of things I wanted to learn, art was something I wanted to learn. So I was always engaged in color theory. I was always engaged in looking at other artwork and seeing how it was created and and learning from it. Right. Um, so it's, I've just, I've spent so much time thinking and, and learning about this and they've come from so many different avenues from, yeah, just sitting in a museum and enjoying work right. to reading about other artists, uh, to reading about going on YouTube and looking up color theory wow, and, yeah. um, cool. and, and even like a, even the science of, uh, how light interacts and colors interact and different colors absorb light and, there's there's just so much learning within art that I've just been I'm addicted to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that's great. And then, have you always identified as an artist? Like even mm-hmm. like when, from like a young age, or was that something that later came up? Like, yes. Uh, so growing up, I was kind of I was the art kid. Right? I was okay. always doing art. <laughs> I was always drawn. Um, but at the time, I, I didn't really think I didn't think it was a viable career or or, right. a, or a responsible life. I, I is almost a way to put it. Mm-hmm. And is that why you chose to go to dentist to dentistry yeah, school? Yeah, I chose. So, I chose dentistry, and nothing against dentistry; it's a sure. great career. But the reason I was going for dentistry is because it was a safe, comfortable career. Mm. I was going to be a, a rich dentist. Was my <laughs> mindset? Okay. And I realized that was not the path for me. Right. Um, and art was always my passion, and it's hence one of the big reasons why I paint stuffed animals. Mm. Is it's is follows childhood passions and dreams. Like, do what you really, really love in life. Like, right. it, I, I can guarantee you will live a good life if you find a, uh, one of your passions and actively pursue it. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be your career, but do it. Uh, if you love dancing, dance. If you love <laughs> cooking, cook. Um, right. And oh, But going back to your question, uh, I did always identify m- myself as an artist. Mm-hmm. I just, a lot of my life, I wasn't, confident enough mm. to admit it yeah um yeah that's cool yeah, yeah. did your parents support you as an art like being an artist did they support your artistic passion and creative okay outlet? one of the luckiest things that ever happened to me is i have an amazing mom and dad mm-hmm. um very supportive put me in uh you know extra art classes they're very nurturing of it of course when i told them i wanted to become a dentist they were <laughs> like oh uh, yes, like uh, be a dentist. Um, but I have amazing, uh, amazing parents that did nurture it, helped me nurture it young, and it's the reason I'm here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, that's very cool. Yeah, having yeah. supportive parents that support those creative outlets is like oh, so important. Right. My parents as well are very supportive, but uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just like it help you. I mean, if it wasn't for my mom, I probably wouldn't be pursuing art today. Yeah. You know? And so I think it's really cool. And like, and one a question I had too is, you know, was art something that you're all oh, that you were surrounded, you know, as, hmm. you surrounded yourself with as a young as a young person, or um, was it something you had to seek out? Oh, that's a good question. 
Um, the town I came from, it was, it's called Puyallup, Washington, if anybody knows where that's at. <laughs> it's about an hour outside of Seattle. It's okay. kind of, I just call it boring. Uh, it was a very pleasant, but just kind of boring little town. There wasn't like any art galleries mm -hmm. or anything like that. And, you know, I had really, I'd have to thank uh, the school system that yeah. I was in. Um, we had great art teachers. Art was always a class you took. And that is where I was surrounded with it. Plus, I'd, I'd be doing it at home all the yeah. time. But it wasn't until... Ah, this is why one of the reasons I love California is California is so supportive of art and artists. It was when I moved out to California that I, I really started to get exposed to mm. art. What age was that? That wasn't until 2015. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what specifically about California... Like the Jew that that you were exposed to, uh, I would say. Well, this museum in yeah. particular, um, the that that was honestly my first interaction with the museum mm -hmm. was the 2012 um, charity auction. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Now that I think about it, um, but it's uh, I lived in San Francisco for a year, which was I don't know. Okay, sorry, people <laughs> living in San Francisco. Then I moved down to LA, and I, the great, I tell everybody the greatest thing about LA is um, obviously the sunshine, but all the cool people you meet down here, mm. especially in creative industries. So right. it was, I finally kind of felt at home when I got here just because of all the gallery shows. I'm sure it would have happened if maybe if I lived in like another city like New York, right. it has that same kind mm. of energy. Um, but I like the sunshine more. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just, it was coming out here yeah. and there's such a, a vast supportive community of it. Um, there's always gallery shows going on. There's always artists doing cool things. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's also the first place where I realized the potential of good that an artist can do. Mm. Uh, the influence you can gain to whether it be, you know, inspire more, uh, you know, um, promote a social cause, whatever it be. I saw the, there was artists here, you know, doing things like that. Yeah. Um, it was nice. It was nice. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. it is. I mean, I, some of you have heard moving out from California, I mean, there's like a huge influx of artists coming from New York at some point I think in the like 2010 time. Mm -hmm. And they're all talking about commenting about how the sunshine here, which I, you know, I grew up here in California in Long Beach and I never like really lived in New York for a little bit, but mm -hmm. it wasn't something I really like, uh, I guess I was just used to it. You know, I never really, oh, really it's, appreciated it's it. It's why you everybody know? wants to live yeah, out here. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. And now it's, it's like, oh, okay. You know, it's like, uh, oh yeah, no, this, uh, the light is just different. It's like, oh, oh, that's really cool. Uh -huh. um, and it's, it's funny. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, was it a difficult decision for you to leave dentistry to go to pursue your art practice? Uh, yes and no. I'll, um, it's such like an unknown path. Like you feel like you had like such a direct, you know, you knew where you were going being, you know, you had done all the schooling yeah, and all that. And then, um, and to go the, the unknown. Re it, yes, because I mean, honestly, it's been, you know, it was going into art. It's a difficult path. It's, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot, it's a lot of hard work, a lot of doing a lot of uncertainty, a lot of financial uncertainty. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's ups and downs all the time. Sure. Uh, but leaving dentistry, I, yes, it was a hard decision, but there was no other decision in my mind. I, I knew, and I don't know how to put this into words, but I knew, I knew that art was my path. Yeah. I, I knew it was kind of, I'll tell you the, what I, I remember what I told myself. Um, and again, this is not a knock on dentist, dentistry and a dentist out there. Um, <laughs> but I, I remember very profoundly having the thought, why am I going to spend my life doing something I hated when I could do something I loved? Mm -hmm. And I loved art. I, yeah. uh, you know, I did it every second I could. And at that time, it was such a, this was, to put it in context, I was, I had like one month left in dental school and I was basically 
graduated. It was just, we had our final ceremony. Yeah. And so it was kind of at the point where it was time to make a decision. And it was so profound and clear to me. And I'm so thankful I took that decision. Yeah. Um, and uh, luckily I had a lot of supportive people around me to help me yeah. in this journey. Yeah. Um, friends, family, uh, it was... So your parents supported you too in that decision? They're like... Oh, yeah, they were scared at first. Course, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but they quickly they quickly saw what I was doing. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's cool. It was... Uh, we had one big... It was the LA Art Fair. Mm. We got... I was showing at the LA Art Fair. Had a successful opening night and my parents were there, which was really cool yeah. to see them. And, and they started to see the potential of what this can all become. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, and I think the bear out in the front of the gallery, the large, um, right there, that was one of the, that was from the LA or that? From it was, but it was the, not the first show. There. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But it was from the LA. Art, okay. Right. Yeah. Art I wanted Fair. to show that. I remember specifically we had to borrow that work. Um, yes. And I really wanted, I felt it was important to start the show off with this large singular teddy bear there, you know, as like an early work, but You're then right. to like go into the, the, yeah, but then go into like the teddy bear clusters or the stuffed animal clusters uh -huh. and let that inform the other ones. Like, Oh, it started out with a singular and now grew and in, morphed into a, Oh yeah. Grew into these clusters. There. I'm so glad we got that. Oh, me that too. was uh that was Paul's suggestion. <laughs> that was a good yeah. one. Yeah. Um, that was great. Yeah. It was, I, I love those, uh, big single stuffed animal compositions because mm -hmm. it's kind of it's it's uh you and them yeah um i love how like personal oh yeah um, they, and it's a great uh welcoming piece to come in oh yeah the scale of it is mass i think especially for kids who come and visit the show and see this bear that's you know double their size if not triple their size oh yeah know? which is great because kids have i mean we've had i can't speak to how many how what the number of kids are that we've had come through the galleries but it's been a lot and uh and they all seem to love the show. You know, the feedback is phenomenal. So I was here yesterday, and we were talking. Uh, I was talking to Gary. Okay. And we were sitting in here, and um, this uh, woman uh, strolls in her, I don't know, two or three year old, and and puts him right in front of that painting, and he goes, "Whoa!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wish I would have captured it on camera. It would have been amazing. Um, I. I love, love, love that kids love this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the stuffed animal piles, they were inspired from my niece and nephew. And they're sure. kind of, they are they had such a joy just showing me their stuffed animals. And I was like, ooh, I want what you guys have. Mm -hmm. Like, I want that energy. Yeah. Um, and so I love to hear that kids are getting uh, excited about this. I hope it, um, you know, my, uh, okay, my real goal and passion in life is I want to inspire kids. Mm -hmm. I want to inspire kids to pursue the things they love. Yeah. Um, art, great. It, really creative things, but any, whatever you love in life. But I, uh, I think it's important to get kids at that age inspired because they're yeah. going to be the real future of, right. of, well, of the world. Absolutely. And I think like one thing that your show brings to that is the accessibility, you know, mm -hmm. kids come to the show and it's, it's the, the content is accessible. It's mm -hmm. familiar to them. They're like, oh, I have these animals, you know, within my toy collection or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. I, or I watch this on TV and see these things. So they immediately, you know, they gravitate towards that. And I think that, you know, going to a museum, you know, and, and being in the art world, I think we forget sometimes how inaccessible museums come off to the general yeah, public. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, it's like they're not for everybody. But when you make work like this, it's like, oh, it's for everybody. Like, you know, and it kind of redefines what a museum is about and what works are defined and put on the walls of a museum. I so, love you and Ron for that because you're uh, one of the few museums I know that, oh, I'm not going to, I was about to cuss on here, but I will not. <laughs> um, you guys are doing, for lack of, a different you guys are doing cool thing you're bringing in new crowds of people i remember the powwow show mm -hmm. that you guys had i was like oh, oh yeah okay they're on to something yeah um uh, i love it and i i want i want this to be a, very accessible for people i yeah. want people to come in here and have an amazing afternoon or right. uh have an amazing moment 
yeah. um, is what I'm I'm hoping for. Yeah, and I think uh, people do. I mean, it's great, especially with both shows with Tony Tony's show and this show. You know, you get the both best world, uh, the best of both worlds. Yes, you know? I and agree. It's really fantastic. I agree. Um, and I love like the, all the different forms that you have in here. I think one of the things I love is the fact that we have also sculpture in the show. Mm -hmm. You know, and having one of your large teddy bears, um, which is it's four feet tall. Four feet tall. Yeah, yeah. four feet tall. It's huge. And um, and I remember we got it here, and then we had to actually hire a uh, gantry <laughs> team, a, a gantry, which is this huge crane that comes in and lifts it off of the pallet, or whatever. And it was this whole thing that you know just kind of, <laughs> it was just a step that we kind of just didn't think, didn't foresee happening. And so, anyways, but uh, but we got it into the right spot, and where and it looked great amongst the pieces. But, oh, I'm yeah. so glad we got it in here. But it was it was a journey. It was. Um, I was like, oh my gosh, like yo, like they thank dropped, you, team, for. Helping yes. with that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, they dropped it off on the pallet and then we're like, well, how do we get it off the pallet? This weighs a ton. <laughs> and literally it weighs a ton. But and the, so yeah. The one of the big reasons I got interested in sculpture is more yeah. of um accessibility. Yeah. I um, my one of one of my big goals is I want that bear in Central Park. Oh, I yeah, want yeah. I want kids hanging out all over it. Yeah. I want kids going up to it and trying to turn their head upside down, realize <laughs> that the head's upside down. Right. Um, I love sculpture for, for that ability. Yeah. Um, they yeah. can, it's just, it's one more place in the world you can tap into and hopefully uh, brighten somebody's day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, okay. Uh, and then one of the, I think something, I just wanted to step back into the, the aspect of putting the show together mm -hmm. was like the vision. Cause I know there are, when, that was the great thing about going to your studio was you had a miniature mock-up of all the galleries to scale with the pieces and such. So in doing that, did you have a specific vision for the show? Like, was that something that was that you like immediately thought of once you got the invitation? Mm. Or mm. was it something that built over time? Um, definitely something that built over time. Yeah. Uh, honestly, a lot of it was when you and Ron would come to my studio and we'd sit there for an hour, hour and a half and talk and mm -hmm. talk ideas and talk about inspiration and, and it formulated over that time. Right. Um, and I've kind of learned really the way my creativity works is um, I trust it. I just have to let it keep going. And I know the answers start to come together and the vision starts to come together. Right. And the more I do that now, the more thing, more, things I look for in the future. I, I now I'm starting to able to paint a better vision. But two years ago when we started this, mm -hmm. it was kind of like, holy smokes, like <laughs> I'm gonna have a museum show. Like, yeah. okay, I, like I know I just have to keep, I have to keep moving forward. I have to keep talking to you guys. Yeah. Um, and it beautifully came together. Yeah, it's um, crazy how long these things take. It's, people are always kind of taken back by it. Like, oh, like, how long that show take to put together? I'm like, oh, like two or three years. I'm oh, like, wow. I know. And there's so many steps that go into it and so many people involved, you know, mm -hmm. like with, with our curatorial team with Susie and Amanda and Steve and Brian and, and Caitlin and everybody, you know, it's just like, and Ron especially, you know, it's like everybody comes in and works hard to get this all. Yes. And, and then your team as well. I mean, it's just like, it's so much back and forth, but, but it's a wonderful process, you know. It's it like, is. It's like I love but I love I love my job. I love what I get to do because it's fun working with these with you with with brilliant creatives who get to um we get to like exemplify their work here in the show. Thank let you, people, thank you. Let the audience and community experience it. Thank so, you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, do we have a question? Yeah, we'll okay. Okay. Uh, right. Oh sure. Oh. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Um, so the sculptures are, uh, they're originally, I sculpted them out of oil clay. And oil clays, uh, I tried a couple different clays. There's some that dry in the air. Um, oil clay never dries. So you could always kind of move it and squish it. And I found it the most similar to how oil paint reacts. And yeah. I guess it happens to be oil clay, so it makes sense. But um so first they're in oil clay and then they're cast into bronze. Um, they're first turned into a uh, wax like mold of it. And then the wax is then turned into bronze. And then um, bronze is, if you go into like any park, you know, you'll see those are bronze sculptures mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. Very cool. And you did, 
the bear was new, and then also the Unican out in the front was, yes. uh, was new too, right? Uh, the piece. Unican is my brand new sculpture, yeah. and it's uh, a Unican do it. It was, uh, <laughs> um, it was, uh, it was kind of inspired by the mindset that yes, you can achieve anything you put your mind to. It's, yeah. uh, as long as as long as you believe it, you can, you will get there. Absolutely. Um, but ah, I loved. I love, love, love sculpting. Uh, mm. I'm trying to, I love oil painting, but I love sculpting. I keep telling myself, I got to find more time to sculpt because I just, uh, working with your hands, there's something, I don't know, there's something natural about it, something yeah. good about it. Um, I like it. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there, is there another question, Dylan? Uh, just okay. We'll get, we'll get to that one, yeah. Um, okay, I want to go back to, like, when you made the, decisive moment of you uh choosing career paths like mm -hmm. what were some uh do you could you speak to like a couple of, like the early challenges you faced of, like when you when you did that uh when you made that decision in those early formative years yes um oh okay this is something i've been thinking about a lot that it's i used it was it used to be a uh and other artists will know this mm -hmm. too is it used to be a struggle but now i see it as a huge benefit is um, there's no guidebook to how to proceed in the art world. Mm -hmm. Like it's literally every artist has a unique path of where they go, what they're trying to ultimately achieve. Um, and at the beginning, that's a huge struggle because you feel yeah. a little lost. You sure. don't know where to go. Um, and I would say uh, <laughs> if I was the... Uh, speaking to other artists, um, that's a good struggle to go through. It's a good thing to um, navigate through because it is it is the learning that will help you grow as, as not only as an artist, but probably as a person as yeah. well. Um, but that was definitely a big struggle. Um, but again, now it's, now the, it, the world's my oyster. Yeah. Like I, I love the, the, almost limitless possibilities of things you can do if, if you really believe and pursue them. Yeah. Did um, you have a community of artists that you like that you hung out with? I did. Yeah. Um, That's great. Oh man. I, the, I'd say the key to life. Um, one of the keys to life is community, friends, yeah. friends and family. Um, and so now I have an amazing, um, community of artists, mm -hmm. friends. Uh, and at the time I did, too but you know honestly i probably could have had a better one yeah. um yeah it was uh i was definitely in it was like i said it was uh probably eight years of um, really grinding yeah. um yeah, it's a ten thousand hour thing like <laughs> yeah. uh it's uh i is <laughs> a little off topic but i remember a lot of people would ask me, how do you find your style? I mm. hear artists get that a lot. And yeah. it's, uh, you spend 10,000 hours doing something and, yeah. you will find your, and you will find your style. It really, it's, oh, I just read an amazing quote from, uh, I read this book by um, Malcolm Gladwell mm -hmm. uh, called um, Outliers. And one of the stories in there was, uh, the basically the ending of it was, teaching uh, the miracle of meaningful work. Mm. Um, so mm. I, all the, and this was like, this going back to leaving dental school was yeah. a hard decision. It didn't feel hard because everything I was doing now felt so meaningful. Right. Um, even though there was a lot of struggles and ups and downs. Um, but yeah, I guess yeah. to go back to answer your question it's really uh you don't yeah. have a you don't really have a guidebook so uh find other artists right. and and uh and yeah. learn from them absolutely did yeah. you have a did you have like any mentors at all like Ooh. artist artist mentors that kind of helped you that kind of gave you a little bit of uh, some guidelines yeah of, like what to fall like how to how to navigate it you know um honestly ron was probably oh, cool. one of the first yeah. here um i had an artist friend named uh greg auerbach mm -hmm. uh who's still a good friend and he he was my same age but he was down here in the in the LA art scene a little bit and he taught me a lot and he was one of the great things he had was he was an amazing uh 
he really valued relationships, mm. um, which is uh, my, a new life model, of, or not new, but pretty new life model of mine. Right. And um, I definitely learned it from him, and he helped me kind of navigate the initial yeah. um, world. At the time, uh, okay, here's another thing. If uh, aspiring artists, um, if you're not good at business, find somebody that is, uh, because <laughs> art is a business. Right. Um, and either you got to learn to be good at, you know, be mindful about business, or you must find, you know, um, somebody you trust that is. Yeah. Because uh, it's, without it, it's hard to go places. Oh, totally. Yeah. I, would t- I remember I would go speak at my uh, alma mater at my college, and, and uh, they talked to talk to the senior the graduating seniors and mm-hmm. then i'd always tell them like go take a marketing class and a oh, business class gosh. after you graduate at a community college because you know in art school they teach you how to like uh basically break down all your concepts and to think critically and conceptually but they don't teach you how to be an entrepreneur which is what you are when you when you totally. leave school to go out and navigate the art world because now you have to sell yourself and your artwork that nobody needs. Yes, you know? yes. <laughs> and so you're just selling this like very niche thing. And so like go take, you know, learn the fundamentals of what that looks like because those are two uh, schools of thought you're not learning here. It's totally. That know? is a, a great point. Uh, artists are entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you are operating a business at, right. at some level. Um, I mean, you can, yeah, you can paint and do conceptual things and think in that purest artistic mindset but at the end of the day like you you were hoping to make a living by selling your work yeah and so you have to kind of figure that out and unless oh, yeah. you already are kind of wired that way you're just you have to learn it you know go to school and figure it out or yeah have good mentors or network, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, networking i feel like is such a important uh aspect of the art world as well it is yeah i wish i would have known known it more back in the day because uh, i should have nurtured that side a lot more uh yeah. because i can see how helpful and really it is is like now i love talking to other artists and sharing whatever information i can right. um i definitely encourage artists to <laughs> yes ask questions and artists love talking about art anyway right so yeah <laughs> it's a trust yeah. me you're not bothering them <laughs> yeah and then you're actually having like art like, well, well you uh art or artist only party yes yes yeah. yes i am um, that's amazing i mean that's great to like bring that community back you know into it because i feel like every, especially in la everyone is so everything is so spread out to have the had to hold a place where people can kind of come together and congregate oh, you know it's it great so you're doing incredible that. yeah um there's so much fun yeah we it's uh my artist friends and i we have these little studio parties and we only invite artists that's the only <laughs> stipulation is you have to be an artist <laughs> and it's so fun having those conversations at those uh little get-togethers because mm-hmm. they're there's just ones you can't really have with, uh, real, uh, with other people. Right. You know, people who are not painting every day. Yeah, uh, just wouldn't make sense what you're talking about. Right. But um, we, our big vision is, we hope that this is like a, you know, like a, well, I was gonna say countrywide, but maybe worldwide kind of, like organization. We'd yeah. love to have this party somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, imagine some party somewhere in Europe and all the artists in the world come and meet at one place. Yeah. Oh, it'd be incredible. <laughs> Uh, yeah i mean you read about great art movements within the context of modern art history and you're like and a lot of them all kind of started within a grouping of peoples you Mm -hmm. know and then they kind of spawned out from there and influenced others yeah and um anyways i think it's really great that you're that you're you know nurturing that and like and not creating i feel like people will tend to kind of distance themselves from because of competition or whatever Mm -hmm. you know for that you're going to trade secret you know yeah, you know, secret service like that, and so, anyways, but trade that's secrets. That's the but. beauty is the group that we have yeah. is it's everybody's trying to make everybody better. Yeah, um, that's great, and it's not, and especially in the world of art, like there's, uh, there's room for everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah everybody can succeed in art and whatever means success is, or mm-hmm. whatever the, uh, their definition of success is, but it's a very good group because everybody's very open to share of what's working, what's not working, new things are doing. Right. It's very uh, enriching. Very cool. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Some questions? Yeah, totally. (laughs) Are they an artist? Uh, (laughs) 
Mm. Oh, wow, that's a good question. Um, what surprises you most about your career at this stage? How far I've got at this age. Mm. Uh, I still, I, um, I'm very thankful to be here. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's, uh, you stop and notice where you're at. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's nice. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how to answer that <laughs> any other way, but uh, I can give you another answer to that, that too. Um, I'd say on a more pragmatic level, um, how much it is a business. Um, and I would say I knew this going in at the beginning, but I'm really feeling it now is this is the same we've heard all the time. It's do what you love and you never work a day in your mm. life. Whew. Damn, is that a true statement? <laughs> um, it uh, surprise isn't the right word. It uh, It's something I think of often that I'm very thankful for. Mm. And I, I get, I, realize there's a lot of room for other people to do to live similar lives mm -hmm. like to to enjoy what they're doing and whatever that may be um and it's kind of a lot of us just mindset and and kind of really realizing spending time thinking of what are those things that make you happy in life yeah um, yeah and like i love that i've Listen to another podcast you did, um, and you mentioned that like room at the top. With that, with that being said, like, how do you see? I think like artists now with like social media, you have more of a platform that you're given, you know. Whereas, I think when no, when I came into the art world in 2005 or 2006, like yeah, that wasn't that didn't exist mm -hmm. anywhere. You're kind of like I think you had MySpace at the time. Yeah, oh yes, know? and so, um, but anyways, but like, how has you seen like social media play? in a way of the way artists now navigate their art careers. Ooh, probably the biggest disruptor in the art yeah. world, right? Yeah, like, oh, absolutely. Uh, it has, uh, it is, it's made my life possible. I mean, mm -hmm. I have two collectors from Turkey mm -hmm. who I would have never been introduced to, except now, you know, I can post a painting on my Instagram or social media and the, the world is has access to it right like they can see it and it's been super empowering for all artists um it's i mean it's a game changer right game changer yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's it's made it's made art such a viable career mm -hmm. um if you got the like gusto to do it you can do it mm -hmm. uh, you can totally do it uh yeah. it's going to take some experimenting it's going to take some failing but uh failure but you have the platform where you could show the world what you're doing mm -hmm. and uh you know be rewarded with a life of art for it yeah um yeah it's uh i mean it's been critical in my art career i look at artists that artists that made it that didn't have social media mm -hmm. i was thinking how the hell did you get <laughs> like how'd you get into these museums like yeah how did you how do you get people to see your work like they must have been really hustling yeah but uh yeah it's um i think it was like all a, artists should have a very strong digital social yeah. presence right um yeah absolutely I mean, yeah it's just i see artists yeah you know, i see both like some artists like they'll completely neglect that you know they'll be like oh i'll deleted my instagram you know and just like yeah. and then went that route <laughs> and you're like okay and then um and there's, I'm going to make it the other, I'm going to do it the other way by being more mysterious or a little more mystique to their work and yeah. kind of go that angle, you know, versus like, yeah, like I see you're doing, you're doing reels, uh, you know, all that and being very active, which I think is great because it gives access yes. again, you know, and I think people, especially in this day and age, people like that, you yep. know, and I think um, they want to have, they feel like they need to have access, which also is a very odd thing. I feel like, you know, that, that now they are inclined to have, they are just, that is, uh, interesting. That is a given, 
Yeah. Like, yeah. I, just, which, I deserve to have access to you because of their Instagram. Yeah. So. I could, I could, uh, I could somewhat get behind that. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, the stuff you want to put out, you could put it out on social media if you want, or you don't have to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but, um, uh, oh, one of the things, a recent, a uh, fairly recent like mindset that I started to have is I really started, I'm looking more at my social media as, as a fun, like art. It's almost like an art project. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I get to, I get to craft. Oh man, I could go on a whole deep conversation about <laughs> um, the process of like brand building. Sure, uh, brand course. building's yeah. been the thing I've been really interested in. Because now you have Brent Esterbrook Studios. Right? Yeah, That's Esterbrook like, Studios. Yeah, right. um, but it's fun to start really diving into uh, all the nuances of how the experience you're creating, mm-hmm. and you know, social media is an experience. So. Right really focusing and, and making that an art piece and doing it and making it you, I, I think is the, is a very good thing to pursue and a good way to go about social media. Yeah. Um, Cause I've had, uh, yeah, I've had mixed feelings about social media at times mm-hmm. where I was like, ah, oh, I don't want to be on social media, but I realize how impactful it is and that I get to hopefully sp- spread a lot of inspiration through my yeah. um, social media. Absolutely. Yeah. Where do you see yourself beyond social media? Like after, like say after Instagram. Mm. Um, I mean, I don't even know the answer to that question. I, mean, I don't know where <laughs> wow, I see myself as Instagram, but I mean, like. Um, okay. I'll, one thing I really, really, really love is I love human to human interaction. Mm. I love, I love being present. I love no cell phones. Yeah. I love being there, having conversations with people, connecting with people. Um, I'm so I have a uh, on February 18th. I have a a um, a solo show I'm having at my space. Oh, great! And so I have a uh, I have a show space downstairs, and I have a studio upstairs. And I'm going to allow no cell phones upstairs because <laughs> I want people up there. I want people connecting and yeah. talking and. Um, so I've been thinking of these kind of like no cell phone art show mm. parties yeah. where if you're there, you're there. Yeah. Um, and okay, again, this is going into a deeper conversation, but I see a future of a lot more, how would I put this, present things. Um, again, think no cell phone art shows. Yeah. Um, where, yeah, it's just you're there to be there. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine doing. I mean, I love going on studio visits because of the, you know, in person, conver- you know, yes. face to face conversation. I, mean, I could imagine doing studio visits like through Zoom, even though we had to do them during COVID, mm. you know. But it was still it was hard, you know, mm-hmm. because there isn't there's that um, there's the a screen. digital barrier yeah, yeah, kind of like, yeah. Oh. So, anyways, but um, but yeah, no, I mean, I think that's great. Yeah, I wonder. You know, I have two young kids and I wonder like what their world's going to be like, what is there going to be their Instagram or is there going to be like a revolt against social media? Like, will that eventually evolve into that? So who knows? I mean, I I've know. heard students, right. Are kind of students in college or from what I've heard are kind of going against social media yeah. at some point, but it's, it's one of those things. There's a ton of good to social media. It's just a lot of it. Oh yeah, it's not. No, uh, but the good is good. The yeah. good <laughs> needs to be uh, amplified. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, one of the things I think too, I wanted to kind of talk about your art practice, and but you as a person, I've noticed, and um, one of your strong suits is your drive and your motivation. Mm-hmm. Thank you know? you. And I think that from what we've talked about and what I also see of you continually painting every day in the studio, whatever we post on social media is like you doing drawings or, you know, you're in the studio painting I mean, like what like facilitates and what, like what gives you that drive? Is it? Ooh, uh, probably something. It's the, I can explain a lot of why I do things in art, but there's some things I can't really explain. And the, the interest of it, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm so drawn. I, well, it's, I'm drawn to the the learning aspect mm-hmm. of it is very, very enticing. So it's, I'm always, I, 
uh, I love spending time with my wife in the morning, but mm-hmm. I often <laughs> say um, I can't put my shoes on fast enough to get to my studio. Sure. Like yeah. I, I'm so excited and eager to get there. And it's, it's just all the possibilities. There's, yeah. uh, is, if you really think about it, there's endless possibilities in art. There's no wrong answers. Mm-hmm. Like you can really do and you could reach and you could influence and you could inspire. Like it's, it's limitless. Yeah. Um, and that, and I, I've kind of noticed that I, my talent is art. Like, a, yeah. a, and I've noticed how, okay, in my life, I could use this to really impact the world in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Um, And so now I'm even more into it. Now I'm even, now I I wish I could paint faster. (laughs) Like, (laughs) uh, yeah, it's, it's, I love it. Yeah. I love doing it. And by like impacting the world, like how do you see, how do you see that? Uh, big one, educating or uh, inspiring youth. Okay. Uh, inspiring kids. It's um, I know kids are the key to our future. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'd love to creatively inspire them. No, no, yeah, like I said before too, I think like having the kids being able to come here and see this show and 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 understand these paintings. Yeah. You know, in the way that they can understand it, like they're you know, um, and kids and adults too. But you know, but uh, um, but if you're aiming to inspire kids I mean, it's just well like, it becomes success the museum becomes an accessible space for them which uh, is great i uh <laughs> uh if i can inspire a two-year-old or one one-year-old to a, a hundred year old <laughs> like i would love to it's never too late in in life you know to pursue the things you yeah, love absolutely. um to pick up the paintbrush again or pick up the guitar again or right yeah um <laughs> so i want to inspire them all i just kids are the ones I, I feel like I could act, I can make a real positive impact on yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, like, are there days when you don't feel like painting, but you just, like, drag yourself to the museum, drag yourself to the studio? Yeah. yeah. I definitely, uh, <laughs> I, I guess, uh, I have ebbs and flows. There's sure. definitely times when I don't want to paint. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, but it's like you do though, like you'll go out. There, you're like, oh, I'm just gonna. You know, even when we've spoke, you're like, I will draw something. You know. Yep. Like, uh, a great way to get through that is, uh, yeah, I just I'll just start creating, and yeah. um, I forgot who said it, but uh, they go, uh, yeah, I find creativity every day at nine o'clock when I sit down and start doing it. Like mm-hmm. basically, as long as you start, you start creating, creativity will find you, and and I then I find myself lost in yeah. doing something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. And then, like, was I think, and like, like, was there an artist that inspired you at a young age? Mm. Back in art school, it was the it was the Basquiat. Oh uh, yeah, I loved Basquiat. Yeah, <laughs> um, I aesthetically loved Basquiat. I, honestly, I didn't I didn't know much about I didn't know much about a lot of artists. I was kind of inspired by the the visual. Sure. Um, like, I love love Monet. Mm-hmm. Um, I. I'm envious of him because I that guy spent his life in his gardens painting flowers. And yeah. I just think of wow, what a, <laughs> what a good life. That must have been a sweet life. Right. Um yeah, there's so many. Oh my god, his um, understanding of color too. I mean, just like you've seen those yeah. the hay fields, all the different iterations and the shades and the um capturing the 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 tones of the sun and everything is I amazing. I love look I love look I love impressionistic work. Yeah. Um but yeah, I uh I really love like I don't know, they call them like painter painters. Right. Um I mean Van Gogh's a, another great one, Picasso's yeah. a great one. Um yeah. Philip Gustin, mm-hmm. Jenny Seville. Uh yeah, there's uh there's almost too many to name, like, right? Yeah. <laughs> but that's cool. Basquiat was one of my I was like he realized that I wanted to be a curator. Really? Yeah. yeah I was like, ah, I was like, oh, interesting. That was, I also like fell in love with the impressionists, you know, and, mm-hmm. then, and my first experience with art was like, it was a Van Gogh with the Norton Simon and like, mm. and that was inspired me. And then, yeah. And so I think that was like the impressionists and expressionists were like what I, um, was like my knowledge of the art of what art was. Mm. And then I saw Basquiat like in, I don't know, in 2000 and it was just like, <laughs> man, yeah, I was like, <laughs> What is this? That's you quite know? the difference. Oh yeah, and it was great to go back, and now it's like that piece is at the Broad, and so and going back and revisiting that, it's just like it makes me almost emotional seeing it again because I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, like this transformed my entire life and what I'm doing today. You know, mm-hmm. because at mm-hmm. that point, I just kind of thought it was either being because um, I went to 
went to art school and was a and studied drawing and painting. But I just thought either you could either be a teacher or a, or be a, uh, a career artist, mm, you know. Mm-hmm. And then seeing that, I don't know, whatever that was, it just made me. I think maybe his radical use of color and the, the way he was doing, using line and gestural line and um, not following the status quo. I was like, you can yes. do any, like that whole That's thing it. of like, you can do anything in, in art. Like there is no right or wrong way. These two paths that I see are not the only two paths. Like, totally, there is like totally. many, many paths that you can go. He and, is um, a great yeah. representation yeah. Of, yeah. of that. Uh, yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. It's pro- I'm looking back at it. I'm, guessing that's what probably drew me to it is mm-hmm. so different and so radical and so unique mm-hmm. uh yep yeah. Mm. yeah and especially like that that it was like the head piece that was at the, that the lack, skull the skull yeah, yeah at, that's the at, same one that got yeah, me too it was like i was like what yeah so just the way of seeing a self-portrait done in that light and you're just like it was just so different you know uh-huh. um, and then and i think there's like it was a show called jasper johns to jeff coombs and it was like and it was basically the broad collection but Represented at LACMA before the Broad er, Ooh, collect, interesting. Um, existed, and so it was. Uh, uh, but anyways, it was cool. Man, that's, nice. that's really that's really amazing that um, we shared that. We got yeah. great taste in art. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Question. Okay. Okay. Oh wow, these are all good. Uh, yes, it does. I w- I would bet you in life every artist has self doubt. It is uh, it's part of the it's part of what you go through. Uh, it's part of the growing process. Um, but uh, okay, what go back to the first question again was. Ah, the first one will answer this second one, I think. Um, I kind of, I, I believe I said this at the beginning, but I learn, embrace the feeling of uncomfortability. Um, that mm. feeling means you're probably going through a positive growth moment, especially if you, let's say you're attempting something you've never done before in art, it's probably going to feel uncomfortable. That is the perfect time to do it. Um, mm. And uh, kind of realize there's no, again, there's no wrong answers to art. You can do whatever you want. You don't have to, mimicking things to look like a photograph is not art. You can do Basquiat skulls. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you can, you can be abstract. It's, um, learning to, I, I guess, learning to be able to, uh, I guess mentally handle that discomfort is um, something you have to be disciplined about doing because it's easy. It's kind of like we're our own worst enemies. It's easy to tell yourself, "Oh, I won't try. I, I don't need to try that. I'll stick with what I know. I'm I'm good at that. I could keep doing that." Um, learning to overcome that voice, uh, discipline. And if you really want to get into it, uh, meditation. Uh, mm-hmm. Meditation has changed my life. I highly suggest anybody anywhere could benefit from some sort of mindfulness activity, whether it's thankful journaling. Uh, I think exercise is a good form of meditation. But um, I've, I've, uh, I've had a pretty religious meditation practice, and it's, it's really it's a 10-minute yeah, I do some breath work. I thankful journal in the morning, but that has so, uh, if I'm speaking frankly, has so elevated my like my mental power, like mm. my ability to push beyond discomfort, to try new things, to think bigger. Um, I, a lot of the people who I uh, aspire to in life, they I they all have a, a meditation. Pro- um, a mindfulness practice of some sort. Mm-hmm. It's not, yeah, you don't have to sit silent in a room somewhere for meditation. Yeah. It, you'll have to find your own kind of little flow to it, but uh, it is 
such a game changer and everybody has access to it. Um, you just got to find your own flavor yeah. of it. That's great. Oh, and okay. The second question um, is, I think uh, uh, this is a great, great piece to, to reference. Um, I really got known for painting stuffed animals. It's uh, it's a, uh, they're one of my most, uh, I guess, desired works. I have a lot of collectors asking for them. Um, doing these square quilts, I, I knew there was a creative drive in me that I knew I had to pursue this. Um, however, I knew they were so different from what I was doing before and that, and the amount of uncomfortability in actually investing the time to start creating this was, I remember at the time it was very, very, very uncomfortable. Um, and I had a lot of resistance. I had a lot of resistance to go back to the, oh no, do what you know, stick, like kind of stick in your lane. And I'm so thankful I pushed through and do the, did this because now these pieces are becoming such a massively important, uh, important to me and my creative process. And I know if I kind of let that discomfort or discouragement get to me, I, I would have never pursued this. And, and these were such a, a big like game changer for me. Yeah. I, I'm talking in my art and in my like personal life it sure. kind of it kind of showed me oh of course you can change you're fully capable of change mm. um and i think uh going back to answering the question keeping it to keep artwork fresh is embrace change uh embrace little change embrace big change but embrace change because if you can embrace change you can embrace change kind of anywhere in life right. right yeah um and i my guess is is that's how you kind of keep things fresh and interesting and evolving um i don't know yet but uh, it's but I my think, i think evolving is like a big part you know that's the i think that's like the evolving, right, yeah. evolving is like i mean that's what's important for an artist what i see an artist you know when i visit them is like and follow their work because i may visit an artist say like a year a, you know to visit them last year and I won't visit them again for another year and mm -hmm. see where they go in between that time mm -hmm. and see how their work evolves. You know, I may see that one stage and then see it in another and it's like, okay, like how has that work progressed? And I think progression is like a huge, you know, uh, a huge factor in, you know, in artists in the way that we look at there. And then you know, totally, it, totally, totally, so, you know, um, but, and I think that your work too, like the way you evolve from those, the stuff animal piles into this work, which is a brand new work for the show, mm -hmm. you know, like how'd you get from that point to that point? <laughs> it's just like, wow, you know, like the mental capacity to, to for that for you to handle two different, completely different um, subject matters. Is oh, like, it's it's a yeah, it's complexing. Thank you. So yeah, definitely. thank you, thank yeah. you. So, um, um, but I mean, but I mean, I think like yeah, talking about the textures and the way you like the way you utilize color to inform both works is there and there's a common thread between the works. So. Yeah, it's a yeah. uh, oh, there definitely is a common oh, yeah. common thread. It's yeah. a yeah, it's um same way I paint those the same way I paint that, but just in a different rhythm and tempo yeah. and 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 mindset. But they're essentially they're the same. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> so another question. Okay. Okay. Sure. <laughs> okay. <Ooh. laughs> Oh, yes. Yes. Great. Mm-hmm. These kids ask fun uh, questions. <laughs> yes, I, uh, yes, I do have a sweet tooth. Um, <laughs> I have to say, okay, chocolate is my favorite. I love chocolate. <laughs> Chocolate's the best dessert ever, in my opinion. Um, but I'm so glad. Uh, I'm so glad my uh, 
paintings look edible. I would say don't eat them though. <laughs> um, uh, Do you work just I, in oil, just in oil, right? Just in oil. Well, oil. yeah, for yes, okay. oil. I work in just in oil for. Right. Um, the but, most part, yes. I do some other stuff. Right, 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 yeah. Oil's my uh, oil's my thing. Right. Uh, my favorite stuffed animal. Uh, it's my teddy bear I got at home. Yep. Um, it's uh, uh, I almost uh, <laughs> in a weird way I I identify it uh, identify as it. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's the smiles teddy bear. It's it's what. It's the upside down head. It's my mind shift. Change. It's the, mm. I started looking at the world a little bit differently than the normal kind of dental school yeah. path. And, uh, and it's been very rewarding. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Um, I'm just going to answer, go. Oh, well, two things. Sorry. Um, one thing, uh, let's see. There's a question here about, uh, Oh, you just did the you just did a mural in Wynwood. Yeah. In Miami. I saw that. And I remember you were telling me about it. I think on one of our early studio visits that you had that you're potentially gonna do this. And I was like, oh cool. I was like, I wonder how it's gonna look, you know, like how you're gonna take your style of painting and apply it to a mural. If people mm. don't know what Wynwood is, Wynwood is a neighborhood, is a warehouse district in Miami next to the design district. Um, the Wynwood Wall specifically is a group of started out as one warehouse and grew into like 80,000 square feet of wall space at this developer. Uh, I think it was Tom Goldman. Yep. Uh, yeah. He created this space. And anyway, that's started in 2009 and it's grown into this huge thing and kind of has dispersed outside of that specific area into the whole basically neighborhood of Wynwood of Miami. Yep. And so you had the opportunity to paint a wall in that neighborhood. I right? did. Uh, and what I'm really excited about is, the building hasn't opened yet, so mm. I I can't wait. It's going to open in like a month, and uh, I can't wait to hear the uh, feedback. Oh yeah, uh, especially kids going through. I know they're going to go bonkers when they see it. <laughs> it's so it's twenty three feet by seventy feet. Wow! So biggest painting <laughs> I've ever done, I guess. Um, it was your first mural too, right? First mural. Uh, <laughs> That's quite a project. It was to take on, um, but it was one of those. It was so fun to go through the creative process of figuring yeah. out how am I going to do this? Right. Um, that was completely enriching. And now I can't wait to do another one. Wow. Um, but it, it was, so it's a big pile of stuffed animals. And, um, but I did it in, because when I work with oil paint, I'm very, um, I'm very textural, right? Mm -hmm. Like oil yeah. paint lends itself to texture. Uh, spray paint does not lend itself to texture. <laughs> <laughs> like you, uh, so I really had to rethink, think how I was going to depict this and, and create this. And it all, it actually started maybe like three years ago. I started every morning. I'm not really a sketcher or I am now. I used mm. to not be a pencil mm. pen sketcher. It just wasn't in my like wheelhouse. Sure. But every morning I would spend about 15 minutes doing these, uh, I call them morning sketches, little like crazy stuffed animals. And I just did it every morning and really developed uh, I guess a um, like an illustrative kind of uh, artistic style yeah. um, that I was really getting interested in, and uh, that is what ultimately allowed me to do the mural in Winwood because it was a much more um, kind of black outline, you know, illustrative type quality to yeah. it. Um, and now I've gotten kind of addicted to creating like <laughs> that. So it's like I keep finding all these different art styles to. Mm that I really like pursuing. And that's a, a whole new one that yeah. I can't wait to do another one. Oh my God. Yeah, no, it came out amazing. When I saw it, I Thank like, you. wow. I was like, this is, you know, you blew me out of the water with the, the, how you had done that, how you had executed that from taking what you're known for these stuff, ammo piles, and then translating it onto a mural, you mm. know, into that, uh, into that media. Thank like, you. Like that's, you know, again, like thinking outside of the box and reconfiguring what you're known to do and, and how to change that and mm. adapt it to a different type of, uh, surface and medium. So, mm, yeah, thank awesome. you. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, and then uh, like I think one of my last questions I have for you would be: um, Do you have a specific vision um, that you see for yourself as an artist moving forward? Uh, I do. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I want to share it yet. Though. Okay. I mean, it, uh, <laughs> You're gonna end us on a cliffhanger. <laughs> uh, I I can tell you I. 
I don't know exactly what this all looks like, sure. but I know my focus is going to be on inspiring. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is to, uh, I want to really positively impact and influence the world. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. That's a great vision to have. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. And you have a couple questions. Uh, Mm. Wow, that is a good question. That is a good question. Oh, sure. Oh, my question? Um, what is a specific career milestone that either scares or intimidates you? That is an excellent question, Paul. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, huh. Um, I, honestly, the thing that scares me is not living up to my potential, mm. um, is not achieving the things I'm telling myself in my head I'm going to achieve. Yeah, uh, yeah the, uh, I don't know if anything, but nothing necessarily. I'm very, very, I'm very happy and satisfied with the way my life is proceeding and, and the directions I'm going. I don't really have, I, I wouldn't say I have like a, a fear right now. It's, it, again, my fear would be is, is not impacting enough people. Mm. Um, you know, like um, stopping short and not reaching a point where I can really positively Im impact people in the world. Yeah. Um, I know it's probably kind of a cliche answer, but it's really, I guess, how I think. Um, yeah. my, my part of my big picture vision is, is to grow massively so I can have, I can be powerful in giving back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's no, good. I mean, I think one of your, I think something I've learned about you is that your ability to create access for people. And I think not only through this show, through the subject matter that you're painting, but then, um, but also like the idea of community that you have and that you're doing that with within your studio, doing studio community artist parties mm -hmm. and, and are giving artists the ability to network within someone like you who's had a solo museum show and is doing, you know, rebrand you know branding yourself whatever you know and doing all these things extrovertly you know mm, right and you. so anyway so i think giving people giving other artists the opportunity to you know um meet you and giving access to you i think is super important because you know i think that's yeah net, like i said like networking is one of the most important uh skill sets of the art world and navigating oh, yeah. that because the more people you know the more people you're more doors are going to open for you and um, kind of create a little bit easier of a path. You know, it's totally. always going to be tough, but you know, but I mean, it, like you can make it a little bit easier for yourself if you just get out there and, and then by you giving access to yourself into your studio, I think that's really great mm. and, and creating community. So yeah. thank you. So, thank yeah, you man. very much. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, yeah, well, I want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you so much, Brent, for being here. Thank and, you, Paul. Yeah. So is there another question? Oh, Yes. Uh, ah, okay. So I have um, my uh, February 18th show. It's called 1000 Moments. Mm. Uh, that is happening at my show space and studio in downtown LA. I'll have it all over my uh, Instagram. So you'll, you'll be able to see it. And how do people uh, find you on Instagram? Oh, yes. Um, I'm at Brent Estabrook. Uh, so B R E N T E S T A B R O O K. Uh, my website, same. Um, that's my big next project. Uh, oh, okay. We got a lot of things in the works. I don't know what I can <laughs> necessarily speak about right now. Um, but there's a lot of fun stuff going on. Cool. Uh, but the the show's the next big uh, big milestone for me. 
We do. Yes, we do. Excellent. Nice <laughs> question, Dylan. Uh, yeah. I ca- so I call it my friends list, um, cool. which is uh, if anybody's interested in my work, I highly suggest you sign up for it because we're putting, uh, like I do these things called gratitude tours in my studio. It's a practice I actually do in my studio where I walk around and actually I spend time appreciating what I've done, where I've become people in my life. Um, and we film those and we put them in the emails. This things we don't share on social media. Mm-hmm. We only share in our friends list. So you go on my, uh, onto sbrookstudios.com or brentestbrook.com. You'll find uh, links to my mailing list. And we had the 3D tour oh. of the museum, which was awesome. <laughs> it, uh, the, we sent it out in, in one of the emails for the friends cool. list. It's a 3D tour of this yeah. place. It's incredible. Yeah. Oh, Dylan awesome. did an amazing job. <laughs> okay. March 19th, yep. Uh, this show runs here until March 19th. And then uh, when will you be back here? Ah, I will be back here Sunday. I'll be here from, is it 11 to, 11 to, 11 to 3. Um, be hanging out, yeah. talking art doing little mini tours. Oh, yeah. Come say hi. Yeah. That should be fun. Yes. Yeah. Anytime you get a, to get a tour with the artist is always very insightful mm. and a very unique opportunity. So yeah, definitely take, you, advantage, take, take advantage of that. So for sure. Yes. So, yeah. But thank you again for everybody. And yeah, the show runs yeah, to March 19th. So please come down and see it. I'll be in May. So appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that was fun. That was. Should do it more often. Oh, my God, yeah. Mm. Oh, mm-hmm. thanks. <laughs> do you inter- Oh, thanks. It's fun. I, I enjoy asking questions. <laughs> so, You're good at it. Oh, cool. Uh, That's good. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. I listen to a lot of podcasts, and so I like always take notes on. I've been listening to this one guy. Uh, like, if you're, what is my thesis? The, the the podcast host is Javier. So he's an artist in LA. But anyways, but he does that a lot. Like I think he just does it so he can hear himself talk, mm. you know. And so he just talks over his. Uh, mm. And he create and like he creates topics that he wants to talk about. Like, <laughs> and, like I've listened to like three of them, and I'm like, oh, like you keep on talking about capitalism and Joe Rogan, like you know. And I'm like, what the like? But that thing, like I'm like not everybody cares about that shit. So you know. <laughs> I oh, know. Well, thank you, Brent. That was really fun. Dude, that was awesome. It was super fun. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.